Does this sound better? Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Even I can hear that. So welcome to Brookings. My name is Ron Haskins. I'm the co-director of the uh, Center on Children and Families along with Bell Sawhill. I'd like to welcome you to Brookings this morning. Um, one of the most dazzling chapters in a book of science in recent decades has been research on the developing brain. Perhaps the most provocative finding is that early exposure to situations that produce fear and chronic anxiety can have long-term consequences on learning, behavior, and health by disrupting infant brain development. Equally important from the perspective of the Center on Children and Families is that understanding brain development opens the possibility that we can develop activities that enhance brain development, especially that of children from poor and minor minority families, who we know fall behind in intellectual development by at least age three. Today, we're fortunate to have three of the leading lights in the study of brain development. You have biographical material on all of, uh, all of our guests, uh, so I'm just going to say a few things by way of introduction. First, Jack Shonkoff, who's the head of the Center of the Developing Child at Harvard, I think could be called the ambassador of brain development. He has a great talent for explaining things simply, and he's used this talent to teach the basics of brain development to influential audiences all over the country. I've been uh, in a couple of those audiences, and they are really great, as you're about to find out. Next is Gary Evans of Cornell. He's one of the foremost basic researchers in brain development. Among other things, he's shown that childhood poverty is inversely related to working memory in young adults, and that chronic stress is the mediator of the relationship. The word elegant was invented for research like that of Dr. Evans. Nathan Fox of the University of Maryland has been one of the prime movers in the Bucharest uh, Early Intervention Project, which may be the only study to use truly scientific designs to compare the effects of child rearing in institutions as compared with child rearing in families, in this case, foster families. And then finally, Ruth Cagey, you probably, probably can't see her up here, but it's because she's in the state of Washington. Uh, she's a representative from Washington State. Uh, in Washington State, they have the quaint notion that budgets are supposed to be balanced. Can, how primitive is that? Uh, so she is in the, involved in a big fight over the budget, and the speaker told her she could not leave town. Uh, so you should, National Conference of State Legislators is meeting here, and she plays a big role in that. She couldn't come to that, couldn't come to Brookings, so she's real sad. Ah, but she did send a very nice video, uh, which is probably the strongest endorsement I have ever seen from a policymaker on why uh, science is so important to social policy, and you'll see that uh, right at the end. And then, of course, uh, there'll be some very perceptive, wonderful questions, and we'll stump the, audience, uh, stump the panel, uh, and then we'll open it up for some comments from the audience. So that's our plan of proceeding. So now, Jack Shonkoff. <laughs> 